Number 10. Professional Application A professional boxer hits his opponent with a 1,000 Newton horizontal blow that lasts for 0.15 seconds. Letter A. Calculate the impulse imparted by the blow. All right. So just remember that impulse is literally the same thing as change in momentum. Okay. So when I look at this formula on the right-hand side, it says that the change in momentum of an object is equal to the force applied to that object divided by, uh, not divided by, multiplied by the time that that force lasts for. So change in momentum is really the same thing as impulse. And I'm going to just, uh, in some text, you would see impulse as denoted uh, by the letter J. So I'm just going to write J there for impulse. It's literally the same thing as a change in momentum. Okay, so that impulse will be equal to the force uh, multiplied by the time over which that force acts. So the force they told us is 1,000 newtons, and the time over which that force lasts is going to be 0.15 seconds. So we just simply have to do the multiplication here, right? So the impulse, uh, the impulse here will simply be, right, 150. Plug it into the calculator, and that impulse will then be in newton seconds if you want, but it's also the same thing as kilogram meter per second. All right, so that's the impulse. Now remember, that's the same thing as the change in momentum. So let's take a look at letter uh, B. So it says, what is the opponent's final velocity if his mass is 105 kilograms and he is motionless in midair when struck uh, near the center of his mass? So he's motionless, all right, when he is struck near a center of mass. So in thinking about this problem, uh, remember that the impulse we found over here is the same thing as the change in momentum. So I know that the change in momentum uh, of the opponent is equal to 150, right, kilogram meter per second. Now, what is this value change in momentum? Well, remember the change in momentum value will simply be uh, the mass multiplied by, or I should write it this way, right? The final momentum minus the initial momentum is equal to 150. Okay, that's the change, right? Final minus initial. And I can uh, rewrite this as simply um, mass times then the final velocity minus the initial velocity. I derived that in other problems. So then to find now what we're looking for is we're really looking for the final velocity. It's, that's what it's asking, right? What is the opponent's final velocity? So I really wanna solve this thing for final velocity. So what do we need to do? Divide out M from this side. Okay, so we find that the final velocity minus the initial velocity should equal 150 over m, and then just add the initial on over to the right-hand side, okay? So the final formula looks something like this. The final velocity in this problem will be equal to 150 over m uh, plus the initial. Okay, so do we know the mass of the boxer? The opponent, that is? Yes, yeah, 100. he's 105 kilograms. Do we know his initial velocity? Yes, yeah, says he is struck when he is near motionless, right? Or he is motionless. So that was the initial, is zero. The final velocity, therefore, will be 150 over 105 plus zero, but obviously that doesn't do anything. So the final velocity is 1.43. Okay, 1.43 meters per second. Great, that's his final velocity when he struck near the center of his mass. So let's take a look now at letter C. Calculate uh, the recoil velocity right, of the opponent's of the opponent's 10, kilo, uh, 10 kilogram head if it is hit in this manner, assuming his head does not uh, initially transfer significant momentum to the boxer's body. Okay, so basically it's the same thing, right? The change in momentum is still the same, right? Because the uh, boxer is applying 100, uh, excuse me, a 1,000 Newton force over 0.15 seconds. So I can really look at this problem in the exact same way, right? There's really no difference here. It's going to be the exact same formula I basically came up with right here. Okay, the only difference is what? Just the mass, right? The mass of the object that is now experiencing this change in momentum. So I can write now the final velocity of the head. I'll put a little sub H down there is equal to 150. That was the impulse divided by the mass of the head, right? So what was the mass of the head? They told us it was 10 kilograms. So divided by 10, then plus the initial velocity of the head. But remember that was zero. His body was zero and his head is zero. So now we realize that just calculating this, this should simply be 15 right, meters per second. And as far as, you know, that as far as that, that being the velocity of the head in that short amount of time, that's pretty, pretty serious. So for letter D, it says discuss the implications. And I mean, you know, if you if you wanna if you wanna knock somebody out, hit him in the head, right? I mean, <laughs> that's basically the implications of this. I do not recommend doing that uh, by any means, but that's why. 
you don't see knockouts when guys are hitting the stomach. Right? It's usually when they're hitting the head. And it has to do with uh, much less momentum. The head has a lot, uh, you know, uh, much lower mass than the rest of the body. And also, I mean, it has to deal with that the brain is in the head too and it experienced concussive forces. So, guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. I look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.